so as uh, Shavi mentioned, uh, Jonathan and Sanjeeva gave a good foundation about uh, digital transformation uh, from the business side. So what I'll do, I'll go to the next level and then help uh, and to uh, explain what's the architecture. So even I have a fancy title, I'm an architect. So what me and my team doing um, day to day, like uh, we uh, work with the customers very closely and then help them to architect uh, their digital products as well as help them to uh, 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 define a plan and then uh, in the implementation stage we get involved as well. And me, Sanjeev, uh, Jonathan, we help a lot um, uh, to define the strategy of the digital uh, products as well as their digital transformation journey. So this um, whole presentation is about sharing uh, our experience uh, during these projects. Uh, so any architects here? Okay, cool. So uh, it's more kind of architecture journey. Uh, uh, let's see it goes. So I call it as a digital universe because I believe there are other planets uh, like uh, Earth. So I call it as a digital universe that we are living. So why it's that? So I, I'll take a couple of examples. So this picture actually uh, took in 2012, October uh, 2nd, uh, when Hurricane Sandy hit uh, New York City. So when people uh, try to uh, get the basic needs like water, shelter, and food, people trying to find charging stations because um, the digital products are so connected to day-to-day uh, -day life. That's my first example. The second example, this is my backpack. So if you unpack your backpack and you will see a number of devices and charging um, and cables and so forth because we carry all this stuff because we need all these devices to, um, and uh, other supportive uh, gadgets to do our day-to-day -day, uh, uh, work. So the digital products, uh, Sanjeev explained some couple of examples and Jonathan uh, went in detail about these major uh, digital uh, products. So I will take a couple of my personal experience, day-to-day uh, -day experience, that I, uh, how I use digital products. So this is my two kids, a nine-year-old and seven-year-old. So we don't tell uh, bedtime stories anymore. So what they do, they uh, tell, ask Alexa, tell me a, a bedtime story and Alexa starts telling a bedtime story. So we had that experience and then kids using this device a lot, like they ask about history, uh, when Abraham Lincoln born, uh, Alexa tell the information. Luckily, they don't know Alexa can do math yet, uh, so it might be an issue at some point, so I had to control that. And then this product got uh, improved a lot. Um, it, uh, when the uh, device came, Amazon Echo came, it had a basic uh, speaker with uh, average quality sound. Now the the second generation you can connect to a Bose uh, sound system because that provides a really good quality. And then now they have improved a lot. This the third product is still not um, available yet. It's kind of like a mirror, mirror on the wall. Tell me how uh, I looks like. So this uh, the echo look is coming. I have pre-ordered it as well. So in the morning you can get into a um, clothes and then uh, you can ask whether how I looks like and then uh, whether it match my um, um, uh, whatever the uh, 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 your look and then it will match your dress code. So that's the uh, third generation of uh, Amazon Echo coming up. Then uh, this is the third experience. So this is a new uh, comer to our family called Reese, an Australian Shepherd, 13 weeks old. So I got a, a device for him. Uh, basically, I think most of your family with Fitbit, right? Uh, so this is called Fitbark, basically. It um, uh, collects all the information about his activities, and then I can access it, I can analyze it, and I can uh, take decisions based on that. So that's, that is how I use most of these digital products. So, uh, so these uh, digital products, um, uh, what's our expectation from the digital products? Because when you are building a product, you should understand it. So how I um, position this stuff, first thing, all these experience that I explain are more personalized because it's a providing me a personalized information. And then uh, the next thing is it's real time. Um, it gather all the information and then provide me real time uh, information and geosensitive uh, based on the location it change the information and provide some uh, useful insight. And then it's predictive, like it will collect information and then give me uh, predictive information. I think some of the examples Jonathan explained uh, about the buying patterns and then uh, what um, the market, uh, what type of products are mostly selling, all these things collect and then provide some predictive information. So when we are building a product, we need to consider these um, four um, uh, 
uh, for uh, colitis, basically. And then this is another example from a connected car, like when the uh, uh, fuel level goes down, it asks whether I will route you to the nearest gas station. So it provides personalized information, it provides geosensitive because based on the location, and then it's real time uh, based on the uh, fuel level. And I don't think it provides predictive information. Uh, it might collect the information and then uh, provide some predictive information in future as well. Then the digital environment. So um, every person now, uh, there's a person who's accessing the digital product. So the beauty of this um, uh, environment, basically it creates a digital double uh, inside these devices and then connect with various ecosystems. So the digital double uh, work inside a digital workspace. Digital workspace can be a mobile device, it can be a, a PC, it can be a server, it can be a cloud infrastructure. Somewhere this digital uh, device working inside this um, digital workspace. So the social uh, information will connect with that and then business information will connect with that as well as various other uh, data sources will connect and provide a lot of uh, information to operate the digital um, uh, double to uh, inside the digital workspace. To explain the digital double, uh, this is the best example. So the, um, uh, this is a dating app. Uh, so a lot of um, uh, individuals, um, single uh, individuals use uh, dating apps these days. So what happened in a dating app, uh, uh, basically digital doubles connect with each other and then do uh, matchmaking. So it's a lot better than traditional matchmaking because uh, a traditional matchmaker will find few information, but these um, uh, particular programs are collecting a lot of information and doing proper matchmaking. So the digital double works looks like even uh, the person is having a nap or when he's driving, all these um, uh, different uh, digital doubles are connecting and providing uh, better uh, choices. So the only uh, the downside of this is uh, the, the first date, you are missing the first date because the digital double is doing the first date and then sharing information rather than what we do in a usual date. So that's a good example how a digital double works. So these, uh, how these things connect in a, a computer system, basically, you have a person and then you have various applications. Applications can be mobile apps, web apps, uh, so on and so forth. And then those applications connect to platforms and a platform connects to networks. So that's how uh, the information exchange happens. So if we categorize these things, like we can tell um, the web apps are more kind of social uh, network related applications, and then uh, mobile apps are kind of games and geo applications, um, and then two-side platforms, basically two-side platforms platforms are a kind of financial services that we don't share it. It's an individual experience that we are um, having with the financial application. And then we have multi-site platforms like healthcare. Uh, one example Jonathan took, uh, like uh, healthcare needs to, healthcare application need to connect with many other uh, data sources like insurance uh, and then hospitals and then uh, labs, so and so forth. So those are multi-site uh, platforms. As well as citizen services because uh, information about a citizen citizen remain in many systems, so we are to get information about a citizen, you need to connect with uh, many systems. And then the last thing is value networks, uh, like smart cities, connected cars, and then smart hotels, connect with various other systems and then provide this digital experience for the uh, consumers. So I took this uh, quote from Gartner, what they are uh, telling, like, Typically, when we uh, do a system architecture, we um, try to improve the processes, like how quickly this thing can run, and then uh, about the latency and all these other um, uh, related stuff to improve the process of it. But what uh, they told in this thing with the digital experience is more kind of consumer driven. So you have to think more about the dynamic interactions uh, people having with your applications and the products. So the interactions are um, different, like it can be a human to machine, and then it can be a machine to machine, and then it can be a machine to human. Only downside of the digital transformation, it's less human to human interactions that we are having. Uh, it's more kind of machine to human that what we experience. So the example, uh, again, Jonathan took the Starbucks, it's a really good thing. They, uh, their main, uh, uh, their business model is about people, uh, because people go to Starbucks because they call from your name. 
basically when I go they uh, talk to me okay Asanka and then when they are uh, providing me the coffee they write my name um, on the coffee cup and then give it so but that particular uh, human to human experience it didn't change with the mobile or the digital applications provided by Starbucks still uh, uh, my name is there stick in the uh, uh, the cup as well as they call from my name but I don't need to um, stay in a queue I can uh, pre-order and then go there and pick my uh, coffee from Starbucks. So that's a, a good example to explain these interactions and how uh, you can utilize in uh, your digital products. So uh, I uh, divided the architecture into two sections. First section is about the business architecture and then we can uh, dig in deep into the uh, technical architecture. The business architecture and the digital strategy are connected uh, because um, uh, once you define the digital strategy uh, uh, and your digital architecture both are kind of um, helping each other based on the changes happen in each um, uh, section you have to uh, change the other side as well so the uh, the company strategy and digital strategy like you can't have a separate strategy uh, it has to be the the company strategy strategy should be the digital strategy of your organization and uh, how it facilitate even uh, there's a new role called Dig chief digital officer in many organizations and then uh, usually uh, he or she directly reported uh, reports to the uh, CEO and then uh, uh, under that you have this digital leadership team uh, supporting um, the uh, digital strategy as well as the execution then the uh, business architecture, this is something we defined uh, way back in 2009, uh, even before the digital uh, transformation and digital product concepts came into the picture, how uh, a typical organization looks like and then how they should uh, strategize. So basically look at the internal consumers who's consuming the applications because uh, we have a lot of internal consumers in any organization. And then what are your external consumers? Uh, and then what are the internal current IT infrastructure because you can't um, like throw away everything like the data uh, applications and then other infrastructure running. Uh, analyze what is the current IT infrastructure and then look at the future IT strategies on top of that. So that's the very high level uh, business architecture that we start with. And then the uh, couple of things that we need to consider when we are defining this thing. First thing is the understanding the consumer behavior because um, it's not that as a technical team um, we build something and then ask the consumers to use it. As an example, um, uh, I think uh, uh, when I started my career, uh, uh, like we, I used to work for an organization that we built financial applications and I can remember uh, when a day in process um, runs, uh, people, they have to stay till 6.37 and then run the process and uh, 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 to run the process. And when it comes to a month end, it's a nightmare. Like they had to stay overnight and run the process. So we had a, a situation like whatever IT provides or whatever the technical teams provide, uh, the uh, business uh, people, they didn't complain. But everything has changed now. It's more kind of business driven. We have to, as uh, technical teams, we had to provide what the business looking for. That's where we need to look at the consumer behavior and then architect this system. Then second thing is um, design the consumer ex experience from outside in. Uh, so that means um, the, the one approach is you design something and then ask the customers to customer or the consumer to use it. This is opposite of that. You look at their behavior and then design the system to facilitate that. So that is what we ne needed in uh, this uh, digital architecture. Then uh, use different ch channels like normally uh, we use um, uh, web and mobile but now we have many channels. One example is a lot of people play uh, video games. So use it as a channel to bring your products. And then uh, connected cars and then connected gas stations, all these channels can be used to um, uh, use as a channel to reach your uh, end users. So uh, we need to look at these different channels when we are uh, building this uh, digital experience. Then the uh, uh, collect the consumer data because that's one thing, the predictive nature of the, uh, uh, the uh, 
the digital products as well as a personalized nature of the products. You need to collect data and then improve this experience. The last thing is like uh, it has to connect with the physical and digital experience. So I'll, I'll tell one experience. Actually, Jonathan uh, faced this experience. So Jonathan lives in Sacramento, and then our uh, office is in Mountain View. It's kind of a three-hour drive. Yeah, so usually Jonathan comes to office uh, every Tuesday. So one day he forgot uh, his wallet. Uh, so he uh, has a Wells Fargo account. He need to get cash, but now he he didn't have uh, his uh, ATM card. So what happened? Um, Wells Fargo has a nice uh, mobile app. It provides a temporary pin uh, for you to access the ATM once. So he used the application and then went to the ATM and got cash. So cash. So basically, the physical and the digital experience uh, uh, clearly matched, and then. Uh, he had a better experience with that. So we need to consider that we can't um, like totally forget about the physical experience when designing the digital products. So uh, those are the fundamental stuff that we uh, 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 go through when we are defining the business architecture side. Uh, let's look at the technical architecture. This is a diagram that uh, I found in the web. Uh, like you have different type of architecture layers and then you have a digital architecture. But uh, in my definition, that's not correct uh, because uh, I believe enterprise architecture is the digital architecture that you can't define a separate architecture inside your enterprise architecture. So uh, uh, getting into the architecture, so this is one uh, diagram um, uh, Gartner released. Uh, having a three-layered architecture, a uh, system of record, system of dif uh, differentiation, and then system of innovation uh, to build uh, uh, innovative products. So uh, we took this as example and then we enhanced it a little bit. Um, so uh, we introduced a couple of other layers. So you have the um, system of record layer that uh, contains the, uh, I'll start from the top actually. Uh, so you have the system of engagement, that's where the digital products are uh, available, and then you build built uh, on top of that layer. And then you have the uh, system of integration layer, that's basically the API, services, uh, and then integration, security, analytics, all these stuff are coming in that layer. And um, uh, recently there's a new uh, layer introduced called system of uh, intelligence, so I didn't have enough time to include it, so that comes with uh, that uh, particular box. And then the system of record is the, um, the various uh, technologies to access the data. And then source system of record is where you store the data. It can be a relational database, it can be a cloud uh, storage, or it can be a, uh, a NoSQL uh, database uh, or something like that. And then the system of automation, uh, that's where like, you automate everything, like all the DevOps practices, uh, takeoff practices, as well as the infrastructure related things comes at that layer. So that is a very high level diagram of uh, how this uh, digital um, architecture looks like. So I, some people, they don't like uh, layered architecture these days, so I converted this diagram into an uh, onion diagram that uh, we call. Uh, sorry, I had to click. Yeah, so this is the uh, other view of it, like how uh, these things look like. So you have the data, and then around the data you have uh, the services, and then you need to do a lot of orchestration and uh, integration. So the integration layer comes, and then uh, integration layer, uh, above that the services and integration provide APIs, and you need to secure them. I think Sanjeeva mentioned how important uh, the security. So you need that layer, and then you need to collect what's really happening. Uh, they ask the analytics come into the picture, and then uh, IoT create another level of uh, interaction with different type of a product. So this is a different view of that uh, first diagram. But uh, when it comes to the runtime, uh, this is how it looks like in most of the uh, enterprise architect architectures these days. So you have the um, uh, all the DevOps and continuous integration, there were tools in the um, uh, the um, outside layer and you get the uh, data and then the microservices and services as a layer on top of that. And then the, uh, the integration stuff, we call in the microservices world as integration microservices. So Ballerina, I think Sanjeev briefly um, mentioned about that, that's a good candidate to implement uh, that layer. 
And then top of that, you get all the APIs that provide uh, all these uh, processes and services as an API. Top of that, you have the digital products. And then there are a couple of quality of services that we see in most of the um, architectures, like the analytics, uh, then the security. And now, since you have a lot of services, there should be a way to discover this stuff. So discovery uh, comes into the picture as well. And then this uh, architecture connect to existing services and data uh, because we have to use them. So the integration or the uh, messaging layer will connect with those uh, uh, services and uh, data as well. This is the one view of uh, uh, how we looked at it and what we see in the current uh, industry. Uh, we can kind of have a, a discussion about this as well and get your feedback too. So the, uh, the, uh, the core of this is APIs because all this uh, inside complexity um, we hide by the APIs and I call API, APIs uh, the digital connectors. Uh, so if you look at it, it's not um, only about the business um, uh, APIs, it's about uh, everything, every layer in this um, particular architecture expose it as API including infrastructure, like uh, all these um, um, containers as well as hypervisor-based uh, infrastructures. Uh, those provide set of APIs that you can use uh, in the um, your development lifecycle. Then the data APIs and then application related APIs and then business APIs as well as you know, uh, the uh, UI part, it contains APIs as well. So everything, every layer contains APIs. So uh, the, uh, the, APIs is the, uh, the APIs are the layer that uh, uh, help to um, connect each and every uh, uh, layer in this architecture. Then the, uh, the next thing we identified, uh, uh, the projects, products are there, but uh, most of the organizations building digital platforms uh, because um, uh, to bring a lot of governance and then um, uh, standards into the uh, practice as well as uh, to increase the productivity of building these products. So the uh, platform basically definition is it's a, a kind of a structure that increases the efficiency of a community. A community stand here is the uh, people who's working on the digital uh, products. And then it provides, a, a platform is a government that it provides governance into uh, this um, 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 community basically. So a uh, couple of examples, so this is a typical um, uh, platform and projects. What happen, uh, you create a, a platform and then uh, inside the platform, different type of digital projects and products will come and uh, fit in um, into that particular platform. So this is a one way of implementing this thing by having a shared capabilities as a central uh, platform. But uh, it's not only the way like you can implement, you can have the platform um, and standardize it and you can duplicate it, more kind of a federated approach, uh, a de decentralized approach. It can be due to uh, many technical uh, reasons as well as it can be uh, due to many political reasons. Like if people don't like to have a shared infrastructure, you can duplicate it and run it in uh, many uh, uh, infrastructure layers. But uh, even you duplicate uh, some of the stuff like a user store and your CI CD process, those things you can centralize and run it because those things can't uh, duplicate in um, an organization. So we find both actually in some of the enterprises using a centralized approach and then some use decentralized and some use some kind of a hybrid model as well. Uh, some capabilities are centralized and some capabilities are decentralized as well. Uh, so based on your organization structure and how it works, uh, you can pick one of these models. Then the, uh, the, the typical team structure in a digital uh, platform, uh, so we call the, the platform team um, is the, on the top basically. Uh, so the, there should be a platform owner, that's a business guy who's coming and owning the platform. And then there should be a platform architect who uh, look at the, uh, the organization needs, consumer needs, and then decide how the platform uh, should look like. And then uh, a platform specialist, so that's a, a, a key uh, role in this uh, uh, project basically. Uh, person who can understand uh, what should um, uh, the new capabilities basically and experiment with it and add it to the 
platform um, uh, by uh, creating many POCs. So that's the role of a platform specialist. And then everything has to be automated because different people come and then um, build uh, different projects. So you have to automate all the um, uh, necessary test scenarios. It's about the platform testing, not about the project testing. So uh, the platform capability should test based on um, a different type of standards that you uh, set. And then there should be DevOps involved as well because uh, when a project initiates, you need you might need to create a, uh, create many environments like dev environments, test environments, as well as if you are in a decentralized pattern, then you might have to provision a, a, a new platform environment as well. So DevOps is a key and then it has to be automated. Then each and every project, you will have a project manager or like in the agile world, we call as a scrum master and then uh, there should be a business architect because project is where uh, the uh, the connection happen with the consumer and the uh, uh, the products that you are providing so this business architect should uh, involved in that requirement gathering phase and uh, detect uh, what are the requirements that you should provide. Uh, so the business architect is kind of a tradition, uh, kind of new phase of the traditional business analyst. Uh, it, it ro that role has changed a lot because usually business analysts uh, create 100, 200 page documents, nobody uses it, and then architect will come and create another specification, so that's what's happening. So that has changed, so business architect is kind of a, um, a technical as well as a person who can understand a business pro properly, they create these user stories and then convert uh, with the help of the application architect, convert them into uh, small architecture specifications. And then the application architect come into the picture. So platform architect own more kind of um, the platform level stuff about the middleware and then uh, messaging so and so forth. Application architect mainly focusing on the uh, application side of it and uh, define that. Then you need a number of integration specialists and then um, implementation engineers who can build the application as well as uh, you need test automation engineers um, uh, based on the size of the projects. So that, this is what we see uh, and based on the size of the project, sometimes uh, a project manager can handle many projects and application architect can handle uh, many projects as well. Uh, so why we need this separation actually uh, during my next session after after lunch, I will explain uh, because uh, to have a proper platform and maintain it, having these two teams are uh, really helpful. Otherwise, um, uh, you can't be innovative as well as you can't uh, place governance inside uh, these platforms. So you might have to run multiple versions of the platform as well because now you are providing these um, uh, capabilities as a service and uh, you might uh, have to upgrade your platform. You might uh, bring a new version or a new technology, but not all the projects can um, uh, uh, like uh, work in the same phase and then upgrade to the newer version. So as a service provider, you should facilitate uh, at least one version uh, prior to the current version. So what you can do, uh, give a migration plan for the project teams to migrate to the new platform and then might give some incentive as well uh, by providing a set of services free or uh, some kind of incentive and then push them to migrate to the new platform. But uh, this is what we see uh, in many uh, platforms, at least they run two versions at a time and you might have to run uh, more than two uh, based on the dependencies that you might have uh, between projects and the platforms. So to uh, end this session, I picked this quote. Usually we pick quotes from technical people, but I found I think everybody read this book, uh, Harry Potter. So uh, it's more about digital products, about the, uh, uh, the trans uh, the transformation and ideas. So she gave this uh, uh, the idea like you. Everybody has this uh, capability, and then uh, how to bring this um, power and imagine uh, to kind of uh, define these new products, and then uh, bring new ideas and implement them as uh, software projects. So I took it as the uh, last slide to uh, give you some. Thanks.